after uh, much ado about nothing, completely nothing, welcome to episode four of The Table Read. It's a special uh, bonus podcast. I'm here, Ben Whelan, your host, with the mayor, Steve Clyda. Yo, what up? Jesse Fisher. Sup, baby? And our producer, as always, Sean Connolly in the booth. Yes, sir. Uh, guys, um, it's three days after Ground Zero. Uh, Mass Effect 3 has dropped. Um, Peyton Manning is no longer a cult. <laughs> Game Developers Conference is going on right now. There's not a ton of news, but there's some stuff we feel really strongly about that we want to talk about. Um, first off, Sean wants to tease. There could be some changes coming to the podcast and to One Nerd Nation in general very soon. Sean, why don't you just give us a little spoiler-free version? Right. Uh, well, basically, we, we could have some, like you said, major news coming to the podcast, for the podcast, uh, as far as um, being picked up, I guess, uh, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, but <clears throat> keep an eye out on the Facebook page, The Table Read. You can like us on Facebook, and you can keep up on all the news and all that fun stuff as well. Uh, and then for Wonder Nation in general, um, tentative dates for NerdCon 2, uh, right now, May 12th and 13th. It's a weekend, Saturday, Sunday, back at the Bay City Mall. Excellent. Excellent. And, Those, uh, and that will be, again, to help raise money for the Good Samaritan Rescue Mission in Bay City. Yeah, and even though we are starting a full 50 minutes after we got here, we haven't managed to discuss the podcasting schedule at all, so here's a very live television moment. Do we want to go right into um, Mass Effect, guys, or do we want to get Peyton Manning out of the way? We should get Peyton Manning out of the way. I feel like we should do Peyton Manning. Yeah, we should yeah. do Peyton Manning first. All right. <clears throat> We're calling this uh, <laughs> Peyton Watch. It's much like Panda Watch from... From Anchorman Ron Burgundy. Except I, I care more about Peyton. Yeah, I care more about <laughs> Sing Ling, the panda, who is... Endangered pandas are more important <laughs> than Peyton Manning? I believe so. No, no. I hate pandas. Uh, Just going to put that out there. We have four possible destinations for Peyton Manning. I'm going to ask you guys' opinions about each one of them. <clears throat> Starting with Jesse, number one, not number one, uh, it would be number four on my list. We're going to go in reverse order. Is the Seattle Seahawks, coached by Pete Carroll, finished third, second in the NFC West. Why should Peyton Manning not go there? Why should he go there, Jesse? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, I even, I even consider them going to Seattle. Um, Pete Carroll's a player's coach. That's, that's yeah, the most he of the is. argument. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they didn't do that bad last year. They no, yeah. Two well, games under well, 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 to be fair, that's a terrible division overall. Yeah, he, he, would, he would dominate there. That's a good reason to go there. I mean, um, we've seen what he can do for. I mean, look the, at the Colts. The Colts without him. You know, yeah. The, if, if, if you if you judge one season apart with him without him, what well, the Colts were pre 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 Manning Colts are the same as post Manning Colts. They were the exact same team. Just without. Yeah. Yep. Peyton Manning made that franchise, uh, which is why I think Jim Irsay is an idiot. Um, <laughs> I'm. Just, he's a moron. I've. Let's said, keep personal opinions yep, yep, out of this. Yep, yep, we all yep. know it's a sad day. Yeah, it, it is. But it's a business, and uh, the the fact is, is that the guy can't turn his head without turning the rest of his body anymore. He's had three neck surgeries in two seasons, and he played, what, uh, 16 games in those two seasons? It's not – it's sad. You can say what you will about Jim Irsay, but he made a business decision, not a personal decision. It's not an attack. Oh, no, I, I still right. think it's a – Terrible business decision. That's why I think he's an idiot. <laughs> well, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah. And overall, like, and I, I understand your, your your point, Jesse. And, and Peyton Manning's Peyton Manning. He's a great quarterback, and, and I think even with his his uh, his neck issues, he'll still be a great quarterback. But um, Andrew Luck is probably going to be who they take in, in over first overall, and he great mechanics, great quarterback in general. And I know it's it's tough to say how a college quarterback will do in the NFL, but. If anyone's tailored for it, they're saying he's the best qu- the best quarterback prospect since John. Elway. Yeah, you, it's if it's you Andrew Luck. Do it like the Lions picked up Stafford. What right. was that second overall? Mm-hmm. First, first, first overall. First, first overall. And you build a team around him. Yep. Hey, the Colts, unfortunately, are going to be going into a rebuilding couple of years. And they had to rebuild around a quarterback See. once in the last fifteen years already, right. and it worked out pretty well for him. They got a ring. Yep. Yeah. Teams teams go through rebuilding states. It's what they do, and they have to do it. And. Uh, and this is the the Colts' time to do that, and, and it, make no make no mistake about it. Even with Andrew Luck, in a couple of years, they'll be back on top. And maybe. And uh, I I think a lot of the Colts' 
struggles this year get put on the fact that they didn't have Peyton Manning. Who, who are we to say that this just wasn't the year that they that it finally all came apart for them? I mean, he kept them together for a long time, right. but that was a that was a sinking ship. Yep. I mean, yeah, you can whether only, you it was can only plug it so much exactly. with scotch tape and tinfoil. Exactly, exactly. We, obviously, the team wasn't as talented as we thought. The defense wasn't built to play from behind, and uh, <clears throat> and we learned a lot about the game of football by watching how much the game and the business of football by watching how badly the Colts fell apart. That being said. Other than Starbucks, Mayor, is there any reason for Peyton Manning to go to Seattle other than these other three teams on the list? The definition of determination. <laughs> that he will be playing with Marshawn Lynch. Fantastic. Put, yeah. te- put team on back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, for those of you that haven't seen that meme, go ahead and go to YouTube and Google team or in, uh, search team on back and uh, just enjoy what comes up. Yeah. <laughs> the, one of the other uh, teams that we have on our list is the Washington Redskins, known for throwing any amount of money out that right. will land them any player that they feel like having. On the minus side, the organization's pretty much been a tire fire for 10 years. Um, is there any reason, Is there any reason, Sean, that we should even consider the Washington Redskins? It wasn't even on my list till Steve talked to me on the way here. Uh, I know that the name's been thrown out a lot, but I didn't even consider it a serious contender because I can't imagine a good player with a good head on his shoulders wanting to go to the Washington Redskins. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's not. I mean, Peyton... Peyton is probably one of the smartest players in the game. I severely doubt he would yeah. ever go on to Other than the, the opportunity to play for Mike Shanahan, Correct. who's a, who, a quarterback's coach, yeah, he if is. there is one. Yeah. They, they got a lot of, as far as I know, they got a lot of cap room, too. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know. They got rid of Albert Haynes. I mean, yeah. they got rid of big contracts. The, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, they got rid of the, their biggest contract with, with Haynesworth. So. so they could spend some money. They're always willing to spend some money, though. I think the, the next two are the most intriguing names on the list, and that is the Arizona Cardinals and the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Arizona's proved that they can take a veteran quarterback all the way to the big game. They almost beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in one of the best Super Bowls I've ever seen. Uh, Is is Arizona the best option? I don't think it is. Is Arizona the best option, though, guys? What do do we think, panel? Uh, (laughs) Climate-wise, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe climate-wise. But, but, I mean, overall, no, I don't think that... um, that, that Arizona is. I mean, I, I think we they're can all probably that, agree. In that NFC West. That, you know, yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a garbage division. Yeah. Other than the monolith of San Francisco, which I've heard some people talk about San Francisco too. Don't you hang on to Alex Smith and just see what you can do with him at this point? Yes. I, I mean. It, well, isn't that, isn't that the counter argument that people had when they wanted him to hopefully go to the Jets? With Sanchez? Yeah. I'm not, I didn't even put the Jets on the list because that's stupid. Rex Ryan and Pete <laughs> Manning do not like each other. Yeah. They have $60 million invested in Mark Sanchez. Maybe not that much. It's Pro- probably probably not. Yeah, yeah. $30 million invested in Mark Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they that's to try to – the thing that people are missing is that Peyton Manning's only ever played in one pro system, ever. That he played in Tony Dungy's pro system and then – Jim Caldwell's pro system was Peyton Manning and Tony Dungy's system that they came up with together. Right. To put him into a brand new offense is not the simplest thing on earth, especially one that I believe the Arizona the Arizona Cardinals offense is pretty complicated and pretty different from the straight up uh, 1990s West Coast that the, the Indianapolis Colts seem to run. Which is why I think the Miami Dolphins exactly, yeah. makes the most sense. Please, Peyton Manning, go to the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Play Tom Brady twice a year. Yeah, Let oh us root gosh. for you against the evil monolith and make Brandon Marshall the number one receiver in the National Football League. Justify me taking him top ten had, two years in a row has, in the fantasy football draft. I'm trying to remember if Miami's been viable since Marino. And I can't remember. No, I mean they they made a run at it the last couple of years. No, or no, it wasn't was it they've two seasons ago? Quarterback play. Yeah, it's, but it's, but, the, but they've had yeah, poor quarterback play. Down. But yeah, you put Peyton Manning in that system and on that team and watch they, out. They have a lot of tools around them. Yep, that already. Brandon Marshall, Reggie Bush. You know, yeah. No, no yeah. slouch yep. at the running back. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it's it's yards this, this last year for the first time since his rookie season. Yep. And it's it's a warmer climate, so that can't possibly hurt with. Okay, but you're still, but you're still, you know. It, <clears throat> And how cool would it be watching Peyton Manning teams. play outside? Right? He's played in the he's dome played, his, his, whole, yeah. his, whole his whole career. career. Yeah. It's always fun watching guys play outside. And uh, if anything, if there's anything wrong with his timing or his arm, playing on grass when you're half a step slower is going to help him out. Right. You know? And I would love to watch a – just please – 
please HBO make the reality show about the Miami Dolphins if he goes there. I want to see the first conversation between Brandon Marshall and Peyton Manning. Brandon Marshall's been arrested for domestic abuse and is a um, <clears throat> diagnosed a diagnosed. Um, he's, he's he has an anger disorder. He's what you would call role. a habitual line stepper. Yeah, yeah. I want to see those two guys talk for the first time. It's just. It's going to be just great. You, you know who else you didn't bring up that has cap room to pick him up? Who's that? The Broncos. <laughs> yeah, No, there, there, was, there was Dude, some. You could literally play Pey- Peyton for downs one and two, okay. put in Tebow to run that third down offense. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited right now. We're going to play our first edition of one of my favorite, ga- favorite game, Can You Name Five Guys? Jesse, can you name five guys not named Tim Tebow on the Broncos offense? Nope. <laughs> Mayor. No. Connolly. <laughs> No. <laughs> Can anyone name three? No, I, I the Lynch wasn't he he was part of the offense and then he got wasn't wasn't he traded this past season? Who who was traded away from Brandon the, Lloyd. 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 That's Brandon that, Lloyd. That was and, the, uh, the, the one Eddie person Royal. I apparently couldn't even name. So and um I don't think I can name three. No. Oh uh uh what what was McGahee? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, three. Hey, here's yes. here's the real question <laughs> I though. Got to three. Does anybody really care? No, no, well, that's that's the thing is like, our, uh, I love your when, thoughts. Whenever great. I do my picks for the season for football, one of the things that my friend Zach and I go through is how many guys on their team can we name? And if you can't name five, you're probably not going to do very good. You know, right. I can't name five. I don't know if I can name five Broncos, little oh. Broncos offensive players. Oh, so that just means they're the dark horse because they I could can, they I could do what the Broncos name did. Eight Miami Dolphins. There's the, the, the Miami Dolphins are loaded, loaded with talent. Top to bottom, uh, they're they're the best team with a quarterback situation, I think, in the NFL. I'm trying to think right now. Yeah, no, you're right. The Tennessee Titans are probably second. Yeah. Who uh, people have have said is a dark horse for landing Peyton Manning. You remember he did win, no, lose a national championship in Tennessee. In Tennessee, yeah. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to throw a, because I'm completely way too biased to host this next segment, <laughs> throw the duties over to the Mayor Steve Clyde to host our Mass Effect 3 reaction panel. Uh, Clyde has been doing all sorts of research. He's looked at over five or six minutes of live game footage. Oh, dude, five or six hours. <laughs> I've watched more gameplay than I've actually played gameplay of all three Mass Effects. <laughs> Fantastic. That's a, that's a crime. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Just to um, put this in perspective, guys, uh, the mayor, Steve Kleida, has never played more than a couple of minutes of a Mass Effect game. He is aware of some of the things that are going on, but because of his uh, childlike ignorance, he's hosting the, the Mass Effect uh, Reaction Summit here. At Wonder you're, you're, Nation. You're so nice. Table you're so nice to the mayor. Play, 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 <laughs> He's my best friend, man. Yeah, I know. That's just what you do. real games. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like Madden and Call of Duty. <laughs> you, you were playing Call of Duty, and you were also uh, playing Star Wars Old Republic. The Flame That's Wars true. begins. But you've gone back to, uh, to World of Warcraft, have you not? Yeah, we'll give Star Wars another try after the Jesus patch. Okay. Which is? Tebow? One, no, one. <laughs> yeah, the, the Tebow <laughs> patch. 1.2. One one yeah, 1.2.0, point oh, yeah. Yeah, we've also been playing some League of Legends. By the way, comment, oh. comment with your favorite summoner yeah. at the uh, Table Read Podcast. Yeah. Like us on Facebook. So let's jump right in here. Uh, All right, we're, we're going to start off with uh, we're gonna quick quick impressions from everybody. Right. And we're going to start with the longest quick impression, and I'm going to shoot it at Jess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually have the shortest amount of time with the game right now. Right. Um, oh, dear God, yes. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. That was a quick impression. That was very a quick impression. I, what I want to say about my quick impression is, uh, is this not the most, I, people have been complaining, I guess, because it's gotten a little too shooty, shootery, right. if, that's a, if, if that expression works. Uh, Sean, I think that the action feels more intense and more frenetic than ever, and I love that. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I have some fidgeting with the camera that I'm messing up right now. Um, <laughs> <coughs> no, I, I think that... Um, it, it, the it, other camera. Yeah, it has been confirmed. It's, it's it, in my mind, it's been confirmed that Mass Effect. It's really it's, it's a shooter. It's a third-person cover shooter with a few uh, 
RPG elements. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's, no, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's it's still incredibly fun. Um, the 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 RPG elements are very well tuned and, and very well done. But uh, yeah, what, kind of when it comes yeah. down to it, it's just, it's the, a shooter. You, here's the thing that I don't get. You're you're calling it Mass Effect Three a shooter? It has more RPG elements than Mass Effect Two, by far. Well, in I feel I, like the the Metacritic user reviews seem to agree that it's a shooter. Yeah, which is why it's getting such low scores on there. And the thing is, when we talk about role playing games, when you when you think of a role playing game, you think of a game that you play where you level up and you put points into skill sets or stats that improve your character. That's not what a role playing game is. A role playing game is when you play an effing role. Right. And that's what Mass Effect is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You it, play a role of a badass MFR <laughs> saving the galaxy from a bunch of techno creeps. Yeah. Correct. And it, I'm playing that role and it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a shooter, but it gives you a reason to actually pull the trigger. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to every other shooter where it's like, here's a gun. Okay. Go nuts. Let's not, so, let's not so, attack Call so of Duty. So what you're saying is, <laughs> what you're saying is I didn't say by name. It, <laughs> so. well, Call of Duty's got RPG elements. I mean, you level up and improve your character. <laughs> yes, you do. But I would say Mass Effect's an RPS then. It's a role-playing shooter. I think that's a good, that's a really good way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, that's a great way plus, to describe it. Plus, you get to punch people with powers. I get to, I get to punch people. Yeah, 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 you get to punch people right in the face or any other bodily part that uh, body part that um, also that, that head explosions. Yeah, and I do like the gore. The gore that's that's in there now. I mean, sniper rifles. You take a high power sniper rifle and shoot somebody in the head. Their head explodes, and it's fantastic. Headshots were implemented. Yeah, yeah. Much much to the and curb it, stomps. The, the it, yeah, yes. it's it's a it's a much more visceral game, and it makes it so much better. The combat actually has depth. Like a, it's taken a page out of Gears of War, and I think it was a really good yeah. really good page to take. Has uh, have any of you dabbled in the multiplayer yet? I played multiplayer um, last night. I played four or five games, um, and here's okay. What I'm going to talk about Mass Effect. It's great. I love it. It's fantastic. The one thing I cannot stand in that game is the, still the cover system is, is glitchy. Oh yeah. Yeah. When when you get behind a wall, um, it's fine. But when you're trying to move around behind that wall and you're hitting the A button, you're actually um, now you can you can side barrel rolls to the left to yeah. the right forward back and you're constantly barrel and, you're, rolling. and you're constantly doing that instead, instead of, of in, instead of not vaulting but just staying behind the wall. So it's so frustrating when you're in combat and you die because you barrel roll out into a machine I, gun fire. That's frustrating enough in single player. I can't imagine in how multiplayer. Frustrating it would be at multiplayer. Well, especially yeah. if you're going for the uh, the gold difficulty. Yeah. Have Holy cow. Yes, I have. I played one game of gold difficulty. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Now it's um. It <clears throat> the multiplayer system, and I, I I like and I don't like how they how they interweaved it with the the single player system, where basically what you're doing in Mass Effect Three is you're collecting forces, collecting armies from different races, and uniting them to face the the Reaper front, and uh, and you do that by collecting war assets. That war the war asset number grows, but it can only reach a certain level unless you play. Multiplayer, multiplayer and raise your galactic readiness. It starts at fifty percent. So whatever your number is for war assets, it's cut in half. Yeah. In the actual game until you play multiplayer and, and increase that percentage. Now I only played four or five games last night and I got it to sixty two percent. So I mean it, it only takes, you know, so many games to get to that hundred percent mark. But um I don't like that you have to play well, multiplayer to get Bi- the best. Bioware said that ending. you you don't have to, but I can't remember what they said in order to you actually get a, you get a different ending. Yeah, you do get a different ending. They said they're in a twi- in a wind, but they're not. It's not mandatory to play. There's still a way to get the best ending. Is there? But I, I don't know how you could possibly get a. Uh, it it had to be five thousand rating. Yeah, it it has had to be constant multiple playthroughs. It's the only thing I could think yeah. of. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, especially if you um, spoiler alert, screw up the Citadel missions. <laughs> <laughs> go go ahead. See. Um, I just want to get uh, comments on you guys' uh, thoughts on the gameplay. Because it, it is so much changed from Mass yeah. Effect 1. Mass sure. Effect 1, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's pretty similar to Mass Effect 2, although and Jesse commented on how much more visceral the game feels, and I think the powers really really are the biggest way that you, that, that has changed. The, the I'm playing a, a hybrid um, caster uh, shooter, I guess, and um, I have a teleportation power that hits you right... You teleport right up next to the guy and blow them away. Right. And it, You're a it vanguard. Is, You're it a is vanguard, the yeah. most satisfying thing 
I've ever experienced yeah. in Mass Effect ever what, is see, blowing no. into guys. Oh, I'm, I'm a Vanguard too. The only thing I don't like between Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 in terms of power, and it's just a visual thing, they changed the way that the shockwave power looks. Because before, when you use shockwave, it was a little wave of power coming up from the ground. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that. Now it's just, it's just a, like a, drop of water like that yeah, ripple it used effect to look like when hulk would hit the, the ground and hit the ground and it would and it would ripple and now it looks like like a, um like more of what you think like a magical it, detonation yeah it it, it it looks like, like, a, like a stun gun from star wars yes that's yeah, actually yeah. exactly what it looks like what if, <laughs> you watching a mass effect video to just you know you know enough about you don't this. know any of the words but you can describe <laughs> it so well it's amazing steve Sean, do you have anything to say about the, the gameplay as a, as it stands from Mass Effect 3 to Mass Effect 2 and 1? Oh, I mean, like you guys are saying, I mean, the, the game has come so far since Mass Effect 1. Now, it hasn't really advanced too much from Mass Effect 2. The only real things that they changed as far as gameplay goes is, uh, is the fact that you can now dodge, barrel roll, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. and then that the, the melee attacks are, uh, are much uh, much better. Uh, but still, still a little flawed, but... Um, but they're, know, they're still better. You mentioned how frustrating the dodging and the barrel rolling is. I, I've actually found if you're in a lot of trouble and you just spam barrel roll, it helps. Spam, roll, it helps. You can it get does. Out yeah. of trouble. Oh, also the running much better yeah. in this yeah. game. Running yeah. much better it's than two. The the yeah. the other thing I like and kind of like it took me a second to, to get into it, but when I got used to it, I really liked it. The fact that you can actually pack any weapon you want. No matter what your character class, like you're not restricted by character class oh, to yeah, weapon type. Yeah. But they have done but, away with yeah. with um with the heavy weapons. So you cannot you not you do not carry oh, heavy weapons anymore. It no, it, 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 ma- from one to yeah. 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 it makes sense for the system they implemented because right. your power are restricted by your weapons. How like if you have all your weapons packed, your power stays longer because you're weighted down. If you had a heavy weapon Is on that you, that I, 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 I was yeah. wondering why my yeah. cooldowns yeah. were so high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah your powers. The less, yeah. the less weight you have, the faster oh, your cooldowns. Oh, I'm cool dropping downs, that SMG. Cool that. Jeez, I didn't yeah. realize that. Sure. I, I, I played the multiplayer. What do you think about the loot bag system for rewards? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steve, went on like a diatribe about this yeah. on the way here. Yeah, no, <laughs> just like Star Wars: The Old Republic. I can't stand it. Straight garbage. It's garbage. I can't. Oh my god. I don't know what Bioware is dealing loot bags. Dumbest idea ever. I, yeah. No. I know. I agree. And I. And I. I uh, what you do to get loot and different things like that, you actually you get you get um, credits when you play the multiplayer, and that those credits or Microsoft points can buy you um, loot bags, but they're completely random, completely random. So you can get meta gels that you can use in game, which you can only carry two of at a time, and different things that you can carry one of at a time, oh. and characters, Sorry, character models. Yeah, no hate, <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad thing that was said. <laughs> right, and character models like you can like if you want to be a, a drell or a Corian when you're playing through as an infiltrator or different things, you only start with human models. See, uh, that's that's an example of something I would pay real money for. Right, I, I think yeah. they're missing out on that. I would no, they're not because because for. they are offering. Credits that you earn through multiplayer or Microsoft points. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. My, okay. Yep. Credits. You could you could earn it or you known. or you could yeah. cheat and just buy it. Yeah. You which know, I did. Microtransactions <laughs> are the way of the future. Yeah, they are. Which is unfortunate, but smart. That's a, it's that you, we were talking about business models earlier. And that's, right. As an aside, that's just a really good business model. Yep. Microtransactions. Mm-hmm. Um, don't, don't mind it so long as the game's not sixty dollars. What what else we got on uh, there? That's it for Mass Effect. We're gonna shoot it back to you, Ben. For uh, what do we got? GDC thoughts? Yeah, we got some GDC thoughts. And actually, um, with the end of the Mass Effect segment here, uh, producer Sean is going to give his quick review, final comment score, and then I'll give mine. Keep in mind, he is a completionist. He's completed the game. He's had a second playthrough. I'm 50% done with my first playthrough. Go ahead, Sean. Right. <clears throat> yep. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, like I, like I was saying to you guys, uh, I'm going to give it um, an 8.75. Yes, we're doing quarter scales. Um, an 8.75 out of 10. And, and the reason being is that I, I uh, there wasn't much done between 2 and 3 uh, that has improved it or made it that much better. Like like 2 was to 1, 3 is not to 2. So it's... Um, Going SAT on this here. Yeah, yeah, cor- correct. But um, the story is fantastic, and I love that they concluded the story and that you get uh, finality and there's no cliffhanger ending or anything like that, um, which is great. Uh, but overall, it didn't do for me what two did to one, 
and that's that's what I was looking for overall. Um, I do love the the multiplayer component. Um, it's not something that I that I feel will be around for a long time. That like like a Halo or a Call of Duty. Um, it's a fun gimmick, but, but, more but, like but, a Grand Theft Auto. Exactly. It's, yep, it's a fun gimmick. So uh, yeah, overall 8.75. It's definitely worth picking up if you've played one and two. If you haven't played one and two, at least play two before you play three. You'll, it'll, you'll appreciate three much more. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And that being said, um, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, I'm not mad that I have to play the multiplayer because I feel like if developers put in over 15,000 man hours to make this game, uh, I deserve to play the entire thing. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I owe it to them. Um, I'm not going to go to an art museum and refuse to go to certain exhibits because it requires me to walk a little bit farther. I'm going to go appreciate that epic art. That's not American. Um, are you, you going to give the art a lower score, though, because it looks like some of his previous work? <laughs> no, I am not. Yeah. Because you know what? At the end of the day, Mr. Mayor, if this thing was playing on the IMAX, I'd pay $40 to go see it and not play a single, yeah. not even pick up a controller. Yeah, pay I'm, 40. I'm, right. I'm not as far, but just because of your review there and the fact that I'm a Zelda diehard and I can't really say anything about changing <laughs> <laughs> <reaction. laughs> it. If... <laughs> If the if it ain't broke, yeah, you don't need to fix it. No, and if the and story I, can cover up the the blemishes, right. then quit complaining and just yeah. enjoy what you, what's I, given to you. So, no, I, so that's, what you're I'm saying not, is Mass Effect 3.5 time travel option, moon crashing into Earth. Commander Shepard's got to save it. <laughs> <laughs> I would play the hell out of that. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Matt, on that note, thank you guys for tuning into the uh, Mass Effect segment. I think we all agree it's a great game. And uh, are are we? I think yeah. They they kind of want to get in here. All so right. They were just looking. So let's do real quick like a five minute rapid fire. We can do a five minute rapid fire. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for rapid fire. It is the game developers conference. We're gonna go all pretty much game developers conference to- topics here. Uh, the iPad three was demoed. Uh, Steve, at this point, um, how annoying would, you, would your kids have to be for you to buy them a eight hundred dollar PC to shut them up on an airplane to watch a movie? <laughs> I don't even know if they could get that annoying. <laughs> yeah. And, and I've been on airplanes full of kids. You can get a DS for a eighth of that. <laughs> That's hey, true. Man. Sean, World of Warplanes demoed at the GDC. Um, what is your favorite warplane of all time? Uh, you're asking the wrong guy for that. Just shoot that to somebody else. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the uh, Messerschmitt, by the way. <laughs> no, okay. on that. Quick uh, note on World of Warplanes. Being developed by the same people that did World of Tanks. Also, farther off in the future is World of Battleships. <laughs> and they're eventually going to bring that all together into a super realistic war sim. Um, Jesse, Peter Molyneux left Lionhead Studios, the developers of Fable and Black and White. Um, does this make you more or less excited into the next theoretical Fable or Black and White game? <laughs> you, you just don't care? Jesse does not care at <laughs> all. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with uh, I'm more excited. Um, just to see what they can do without it, yeah. uh, without Peter Molyneux. Because yeah. I, th- I think him being so boisterous and so this is going to be the best thing it's ever. Kind of yeah. Project. It, yeah, it, it kind of just weighed yeah. everything down. Him, him, him being that, like, oh, this is going to be the, the next next great game and yep. then Fable 3. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. None of that. Sim City, the new Sim City 2013 was also demoed. Um, Not demoed, just trailer. Really. Just trailered. Claudia, give us a uh, score out of 10 on the trailer um, and how... No, just give a score out of 10 on the trailer. I'm going to give the trailer an 8. Um, looks like they're putting a big emphasis on um, the difference between going green and pollution. Oh, okay. I like that. I like, can, the, I like can, the environmental Can options. I still allow monsters to attack my cities during tornadoes? Well, that's still in there. And also, when uh, there's going to be Game of the year. that you can have, like, you'll have a city and then your friend's city will be right next to you. Oh. But you're all in one region. And, like, say you're a pollution city, your pollution's going to spill over into your buddy's city. <laughs> I nice, like that. nice. I like that. So you're well, making connections. Yeah. Why are you got to point at me, Jesse? What, because what, I'm going that? to mess your city up. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, With uh, Godzilla. A company in Korea recently demoed a mobile camera that can take a 32 megapixel shot. Um, a mobile is, camera? Yeah, which is absolutely, yeah, it's a mobile camera. It takes wow. a 32 megapixel shot. It's absolutely staggering. Uh, Clyda, what are you going to take a picture of with your 32 megapixel mobile camera? <laughs> Sorry. Baby. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Jesse, what are you doing? Uh, 
I don't know. The, not, then, Sean, are you going to go on the, the skyscraper in Dubai and take a picture of the bicycle rider three miles away? Yeah, yeah. I might do that. Or I might <laughs> yeah. just play high-res pictures of cameras because I love them so damn yeah. much. <laughs> no, see, the, the, as soon as it comes out, it's like, okay, someone's going to make a porn out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take high-res pictures of other high-res cameras. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Or, or other saying. high-res pictures. Yeah, yeah or other <laughs> high-res pictures. I'm yeah. just, just going to point it at, at a mirror and just let it loop until the end of the universe. <laughs> um, right. which Assassin's, have, which... Assassin's Creed 3 now has several different impression trailers on GamesRadar, IGN.com, 1UP.com. It takes place in the American Revolution. Uh, you're at least the character on the poster is wielding a tomahawk. Who are you killing yes. in Revolutionary America, Sean? God, uh, nobody in Revolutionary America. I love America so much that I'm, not, I'm just not going to kill anyone. You're not going to do Cornwallis? Uh, yeah, no. Oh, okay. You're, you're killing the British in the game. Yeah, you're kill, you're oh, killing, you are killing the British yeah. in the game? Who else would you kill? See, I, don't, I haven't watched anything on, on Assassin's Creed 3 yet. I, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I've been in a shell because there, of Mass there, Attack, there, is, so. there is one one leap of, of assumption you can make with anything set in the Revolutionary War. You do not mess with the Americans. Yeah. It is, if you're going to release anything well, to the U.S., yeah. Watch, Don't that's watch, watch I, I, I just trailer. I hope I hope um, oh, kill, killing the British and free running through trees, free running through trees, free running through trees. Yeah, sexy. See, I'm uh, I'm killing Ben Franklin and then wearing his face like a mask for the entire game and just inventing electricity. <laughs> that's yeah, that, <laughs> which is kind of what he did anyway. All right, so. <laughs> last, <laughs> last he's not the rock. <laughs> last question, guys. <clears throat> uh, trailer by the guys that made Heavy Rain which is a game that's pretty divided by us. A lot of people think it was a work of art. The mayor thinks it was just completely crap. As a Anyways, game it was. At, um, at any rate, it's a technological achievement right. for, um, for storytelling. Uh, they released a new uh, spot called Kara. Um, looks like a woman in trouble needs to be rescued by a protagonist. If you're the protagonist, who do you want? You want Liam Neeson rescuing this person, The Rock, or the dude from The Raid, the trailer that we previewed oh, last week? Oh, wow. Sean, who you got? Uh, the Rock. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. I feel that task is particularly suited to a gentleman with a particular set of skills, <laughs> <laughs> a.k.a. Liam Neeson. Jesse. Uh, yeah, Liam Neeson. You know what? I'm going to devil's advocate. Whoa. I'm going to say the dude from the raid because he dislocates his wrists in the trailer to get yeah. out of uh, handcuffs and then grabs a yeah. sword. And what's what's, what's the Rock going to do? Right? Raise an eyebrow and mess up a promo? He's going to run through the yes. support structure of the building. Yes, he's going to do everything block. he can to, to well, save, well, no, to let's, save that. that, that let's, let's, block the support structure. That was the rundown. Yeah. I love that movie. Uh, <laughs> if he has a big gun, I'll switch my answer to The Rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are 20 minutes over what our allotted time was. Thank you so much for stopping by the table read. We'll be here hopefully next week and every week after that. Thank you guys for stopping by. Like us on Facebook. Follow, follow us on Twitter. Ben Whelan, follow us on Twitter. What, Wonder Nation? At Wonder Nation? Yep. At One Nerd Nation on Twitter. For Ben Whelan, Jesse Fisher, Steve the Mayor, Clyde, and producer Sean Connolly, this is One Nerd Nation signing off. Peace. That was shit. There's not often I can't sneak that in.